Hey guys, today we are going to talk about Collector's Edition. It was released in 1993. Only 9,000 sets were ever printed in the US and Canada. And another 5,000 was printed for international release. So not that many when you consider how many booster boxes and fat packs are printed today. The boxes were originally sold for $50, which is a good price. Each set contained 363 cards, the most iconic cards in Magic at that time. And they included one of each of the 302 cards from the limited edition beta, plus 61 basic land cards. The faces were identical to the beta printing, but had square corners. The reverse side had gold borders around the edges, and the gold printing saying either Collector's Edition or International Edition. The special Collector's Edition of Magic the Gathering contains all 302 cards from the original Deckmaster series of playable trading card games. Now, this is not uncommon for sports cards where you, instead of buying booster packs to get the core set, you would just buy the Collector's Edition and you would receive one copy of every card. This is also very common for Marvel and DC comic cards of old. So in the 1990s, everyone was doing this. Now, I like the concept of it, and I feel like they should do it again. The $50 price point, they can probably make it 200 and people would accept that. And they could make iconic cards of maybe not Power 9, maybe not Reserve List cards, but there's still some very, very pricey cards that if they print it in this way, where it's not tournament legal, but you can use it for casual play, you can just sleeve it up and put it in an EDH deck, people would go pretty crazy about it. Now, why would, why sh should I make a video today? Well, Magic is having a big anniversary, and I'm hoping that we get a collector's edition version of the newest best cards and Magic. Now, this would be different from Iconic Masters, mainly because the cards would not be tournament legal and the back would be slightly different. I, my assumption is it does not hurt Wizards of the Coast too much because from a product line, the product should sell very well. The product will not, you, know, you can sell at Target, a store, I don't know how they're gonna distribute the product, but the product should not have difficulty to sell given there will just be a lot of value. Unfortunately, you cannot play with it. There is a player base out there who is more casual, and even not the casual, but even the more uh, dedicated Magic players, they would buy something like this in droves because it's a way to play Magic without affecting the bottom line of Wizards of the Coast. It's not like they're altering standard. It's not like they're going to sell less standard booster packs or iconic master booster packs or modern master booster packs because they're selling to an audience that may not already may not want to buy those things to begin with collector's editions are just very very good concepts i don't know why we don't do it anymore we've only done it once and in 1993 like 19 when was it when it was released i remember choosing between this collector's edition and the top baseball card collector's edition and I chose incorrectly, so, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting product. It is something that I recommend Wizard of the Coast do again, and it's a way to get people who, even like as a board game type of mechanic where you would just have random draft picks and you have the land, and you can play the classical decks of Magic's past without spending too much money, and you can keep it sealed, you don't need to, you can use the pieces for EDH. There's so many different opportunities and so many different uses for something like a collector's edition where you don't want to pay out the nose for a Black Lotus, right? The Black Lotus collector's edition is $472. That's a little bit much, but if I could get a collector's edition Power 9 for 100 bucks, I would buy in a heartbeat because even though I cannot play in a tournament setting, how many tournaments are going on for vintage right now? Right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, okay. But hey, it would be really fun to actually play cards this powerful in kitchen table magic. It would just be really, it would just be a great time. And it would be a great, great way to revive Legacy if instead of promoting Power 9, 
which is very valuable, they promoted maybe the dual lands. Hey, this is a collector's edition, and there's 10 dual land collector's edition, and we don't really care about the reserve list that much, or we don't believe this breaks the spirit of the reserve list. And I will say this, and a lot of you don't believe me, but you can check this up. A lot of cards on the reserve list, reserve list has have actually been reprinted. And there's many ways to reprint them, or there's many former ways they were reprinted as judge promos, or even as um, from the vault promos, or even as large promos. I believe Sliver Queen was like a large promo, like a, a giant card. I don't know. This would be a great anniversary gift to its player base while making a ton of money. You know, this would sell so well at $100. Like, if it was just 10 dual lands, collectors edition dual lands, and that was all it was, they would sell for $100 and people would buy four of them, which is a coach would make a lot of money. Everyone would be happy. I don't believe it would impact the effect of the the dual lands that much the value because the people who want the dual lands they will want to have tournament legal versions of it because they're more grindy players they're more not casual players they're not kitchen table players they're not concerned about they are very concerned about the card being tournament legal and they're not concerned about just the card being used in other ways so you can I've always felt like this was the solution to the big problem of dual lands and power nine being so restrictive. I hope they take the step. I would not be surprised within the next five or 10 years that they decide to do this, uh, given the trend of magic. Magic is not trending high right now. Uh, we don't need to, I mean, it's just fact. Fact is that standard is very stale. We have one top deck to another top deck, and then we ban that top deck, and then we get a new top deck, and then that new top deck becomes a problem. Standard is rather stale. Modern is no longer supported in the way it used to be. We can no longer have Pro Tour Moderns. And we we have it. the only thing keeping Magic alive or growing, in my opinion, is Commander. And Commander is a format that Wizards of Coast didn't even invent. Commander is a player-based format where players, a group of players, decided, let's do this format. And there was a unique design, and then they took it and gave it the commander name, and you might say, oh, trademark this, trademark it. It doesn't matter to me, but they took the concept. You can't say that commander is different from ED8s, and you cannot say they invented ED8s, because that's not what happened. I could see in the future we get better ED8 tournaments at actual organizations that are not just like side events. We can maybe have like a fun, it's hard to figure out how to do it, but you probably have to do it in teams, like maybe a team of two or a team of uh, three people. And the, the other issue is like, why wouldn't everyone just play combo, right? I don't know, like, I don't know. Like, anyway, collector's edition for $50 is a tremendous investment. You have all 10 dual lands, all nine, power nine duh nine power nine and a lot of other like okay cards but the key here is those okay cards have been going up in price as well because they are black border and they are by definition a collector's item so if you were to purchase this for fifty dollars 49.95 you would make even the lotus itself is almost like 10x but then you add in the other eight power nine then you add in 10 dual lands and then all the other 300 plus cards even the uh, lands are not bad because they're black border right and you just got to leave them up and they're good to go one of the more interesting things about this particular set is i don't feel like people were complaining of it like no one had anything bad to say about this it's not it's not the death of magic no one said this was the death of magic that people said chronicles was and i think chronicles was way overstated and it was overstated by the people selling magic cards because they don't want Chronicles to happen again because they have financial interest in not having Chronicles happen again. But overall, I think this is a great product. And I mean, a, a product that's 50 to to $100 that is a decent gift. The issue here is that when you buy a family member or when a family member buys you a fat pack or they buy something at MSRP retail, it's not likely that you will want it. 
This is a gift every Magic player would want. They could sell so many of these, right? And value aside, I don't even care about the value. Value aside, even if they use like horrific artwork to like low quote unquote lower the value, people would want it because what is it like to play a Black Lotus? What is it like to play Mox? What is it like to play dual land? Some people don't know what that's like and it's magic at its most elemental and core functions. This was before we had the large card pulls. This was before all of that. And magic was a fun game. And I view this as maybe a board game of some type where you would have four different decks. Um, they actually came sealed in different packs. They would have to do the assortment a little bit better. You would have four different collectors of this and decks and just like arc enemy, you could just keep it around your home and then people who don't even play magic they can learn how to play because you're using alpha beta which at that time is the most basic mechanics it's not like the mechanics we have today in terms of there's not that many mechanics and they were more they were uh more simple at the time anyway that is it leave me a comment below if you think we're gonna get this soon bye guys